Hey everyone, this is a quiz that I gave today in my solid mechanics class, so I thought I'd just make the solution up on this video here. And let's walk through what this one wants. So we've got a board that's subjected to a tensile force P. All right, so here's P here. Obviously, I changed the problem from the book a little bit. So we don't know what P is. Now, what we want to do is we want to find the maximum value of P if the normal stress cannot exceed 2 PSI and the shear stress cannot exceed 7 PSI at section AA. And you can see section AA is at 15 degrees right there. All right, so remember normal stress is the sigma. All right, so we can't go beyond 2 PSI. So you can put, you know, less than or equal to that. And then shear stress can't exceed 7 PSI. So these are the max values that we can have for these stresses. Okay, so what we need to do then is work through this and figure out what our max P value is. Now, since I have these two stress specifications, I'm going to have to check both of those in order to find the max P value. What we need to do first is draw our free body diagram of one of the sections. All right, so you can choose this left section or you can choose the right section of, you know, line AA. So I'm going to go ahead and use the right section and let's draw the free body diagram for that. So here we have that. There's 15 degrees. We've got P, which we don't know what that equals yet. This length here is 3. And then now I need my internal forces. All right, so I'm going to say normal is going up and to the left like that. And then V, I'm going to say, is going in that direction. Now, considering these two are at these angles, we don't have that standard XY frame. So I'm going to use a rotated frame where this is X, this is Y. Now, using this frame here, I'm going to have to break this P force into components, right? Because this is just on the standard you know, X axis. But now we've rotated it. So we need to find the angle, and the angle right here is going to be 15 degrees. All right. So now let's go ahead and do our equilibrium equations, because we're going to assume we have equilibrium here. So let's look at our x equation. Again, going up and to the right is positive. So let's pull off these components. So first of all, we're going to have a positive v. And then we've got a positive P cosine 15. And this is going to be equilibrium, so we set that equal to 0. Now, notice I have two unknowns, right? I have V and I have P. I'm looking to solve for P, though. So what we're going to do is solve this equation for V, which will give me negative 0.967P. And this negative sign just means we pick the wrong direction for our diagram, which, you know, that's fine. Just leave that alone. And then next I'm going to do the y direction. And that will be positive going up and to the left. Now for this equation, we're going to have n. And now I've got this p component. All right, so we're in this little quadrant here. So the x component of p is going to be going down this way. Actually, I should say the y component, right? So it's going down, so we're going to have minus P sine 15 equals 0. And now we're going to solve for N. So N then will be a positive 0.259P. Positive here just means we chose the correct direction. So now I have equations for V and N in terms of P. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use these max values for the stress in order to get P. So remember that normal stress is going to be your normal force over your area. Your shear stress is going to be your shear force over your cross-sectional area. Next thing we need to do is get area, right? So cross-sectional area. So when we have a, a section like this that's at an angle, so here we have the sections at a 15 degree angle, we have to take that into account when we find our cross-sectional area. Now the cross-sectional area is the area we get that's basically on the face of this cut 
portion here. So if you could go into the page and you know look down, you would have a rectangular shape that's kind of at an angle. Okay, so that's what we need to find. We need to find that area. So to do that, let's draw a little triangle here. So let's just draw a little right triangle. And I need to find this length x. All right, because right now I don't know what that is. So we're going to have x. We got 3 on that vertical piece, and then that's 15 degrees. Since this is a right triangle, we can just use our trig functions to find x. All right, so x then is basically going to be 3 over sine 15. And I know that because sine of 15 has to equal the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So sine 15 would be 3, because that's opposite, over the hypotenuse, which is x. So x then will be 3 over sine 15 degrees. And if you plug that in your calculator, you're going to get 11.59. Now the 3 is in inches, so the units here would be inches. Now, is this area? No, not area, right? Not even the units are area units because this is only inches, not inches squared. So what I need to do is I need to figure out the area. So if we look here at the picture, this board goes back into the page one inch. All right, so we can't really see it on this free body diagram I drew, but it's going back into the page one inch. So the area that we need is going to be one for the one inch here, times this length x, so 11.59. And remember, that would be like a rectangle. All right, so you're just finding the area of the rectangle. So now we've got that, and obviously that's going to be 11.59, and that'll be inches squared. Okay, so if you were to draw the rectangle, so this would be like looking straight down. We'd have one inch here and 11.59 inches here. So this will be your cross-sectional area. This is the area those internal forces are working on. And now that we have A, we can use these two expressions. Let's start with normal force. So that's going to be 2, right? And that's PSI. So that means it's pounds per square inch. We're going to set that equal to N. N is 0.259P. Put that over the area, 11.59 inches squared. One unknown here, one equation, we can solve for P. P then will be 89.5 pounds. So this is the max P we can have and not exceed this stress value for normal stress. Okay, now I still got to check that shear stress. So the shear stress, let's see, that's the normal one. Here's the shear one. So the shear stress is going to be 7 PSI, and that has to equal the shear, and we're just going to take the absolute value here of that equation because the sign doesn't really matter. So we're going to have 0.967 P over the area, so 11.59 inches squared, and now we solve for P again. And here we get 83.9 pounds. So these are our two choices. So which one would be the maximum value that we could have? Well, it's going to be the smaller one, right? This one right here has to be the max value. So P max is going to be the 83.9 pounds. And the reason why that is, is because once I exceed 83.9 pounds, I will have already exceeded my max shear stress. All right, so there's no way I can get to 89.5 because I would have already messed up my shear stress specification here. Okay, so the biggest value you could get to would be 83.9. And then that would ensure that both of those conditions are met. All right, so that is the end of that one. Hopefully y'all found that helpful, and I will see y'all next time.